Foreign players have always been a part of Japanese baseball, even dating back to its early days. From Jimmy Bonner breaking the color barrier 11 years before Jackie Robinson did, to Bucky Harris McGilliard winning MVP, to the myriad of Japanese Americans who played in the early days. It's clear that the league has always been ready to welcome these foreign helpers, even if the press might not be. Given the, uh, state of war, you might naturally wonder how quick foreign players would be integrated back into the fold. The answer is fairly quick, actually, and at the center of it was the Honky Braves. The Honky Braves had been among the first teams to reach out across the Pacific post-war and had made inroads with then St. Louis Browns owner Bill Veek. Veek had always been a fan of Negro League Baseball, famously trying to buy the Phillies in 1943 to integrate them, as well as being instrumental in signing Larry Doby when he owned Cleveland. Thus he'd made several inroads into black baseball as well and was able to point several players the Braves way. Veek specifically reached out to two guys he knew, John Britton Jr. and Jimmy Newbery, both of whom had had decade-long careers in the Negro Leagues. Veek asked if they'd be interested in joining the Braves, and both said yes and would immediately sail to Japan. Veek framed it as a gesture of goodwill now that Japan was once again independent following the military occupation after the Second World War. Braves manager Shinji Hamasaki welcomed the two with open arms as he had played against several Negro League teams that had toured Japan in the late 1920s and early 1930s. In fact, it's reported that he specifically requested that Veek send him some black players because he found the black players to be more polite and respectful than the white players he played against in his youth. Britain and Newbury would debut for the Braves that May. Britain was an above average third baseman with the Braves in the 78 games he played, going 316, 338, 416 with a 116 OPS plus and putting up 1.7 war. He was even selected to the Pacific League All Star team, which is a rarity for a first year foreigner even today. Newbury fared much better as he slotted in as the Braves' number two starter behind Iji Shibata, going 11 and 10 with a 3.23 ERA and a 3.6 FIP over 36 appearances good for an ERA minus of 95 and a FIP minus of 86, as well as 3.8 war. He was also a Pacific League All-Star. However, Newbury would leave Japan after that inaugural season, but Britain stayed on with the Braves, now joined by two more Negro Leaguers, shortstop Larry Raines and pitcher Jonas Gaines, sometimes also called Rufus Gaines. Britain would regress, but Gaines would become an amazing complement to a now-stacked Braves rotation alongside Shibata, Hachiro Abe, and Yoshio Tenbo. But Reigns was the real standout. An offensive and defensive wizard, Reigns went 286, 342, 439 for a 782 OPS. That might not sound great, but in 1953 that was worth 131 OPS plus and 132 WRC plus. Add that to his elite defense and base running ability as he won the Stolen Base King Award that year, and he put up 7.3 war, leading all Braves that year. By then, the secret was out, and the Mainichi Orions had grabbed Major Leaguer Leo Keeley and Charlie Hood out of a Navy base in Kanagawa, and NPB started to draft rules to limit the amount of foreign players a team could have, which was eventually settled on at the end of the season, capping it at 3 players per team. Hamasaki was also fired at the end of the 1953 season as he had failed to get the Braves over the hump. Britton and Gaines would leave with him, but Reigns would stay on for one more year, playing even better than before, winning the batting title, hit king, and joining Charlie Luis as the first true foreigners to be named to the best nine. By then though, Cleveland wanted him back, and the Braves would poach a Cuban kid named Roberto Barbone from the Dodgers and do it all again. All in all, Britain, Newbury, Gaines, and Reigns paved the way for all foreign players in Japan, and even fostered a new part of Braves team culture, as the Braves would hire several great black players in their wake, the aforementioned Barbon, Bernie Williams, no not that one, Wayne Cage, and of course, Greg Boomer Wells. Bonanon.